Good morning and welcome to our Sunday morning service for the 14th of June. However you are participating today, whether on Facebook or YouTube or on our phone broadcast service, a very warm welcome to you. Those listening on the telephone may find it helpful to have a hymn book to hand and I will be giving numbers for both uh, our old CH3 hymn book and for CH4. Surely God is ready to save those who honour him, and his saving presence will remain in our land. Love and faithfulness will meet, righteousness and peace will embrace, human loyalty will reach up from the earth, and God's righteousness will look down from heaven. Let us join together in singing our first hymn today. The hymn is in the old hymn book, number 115, and in the new hymn book, number 489, the hymn is Come Down, O Love Divine. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, powerful and wise God, we love you because you first loved us. Even though we try, we cannot count all your blessings and your goodness cannot be exhausted. In the name of Jesus Christ, you hear our quietest prayers by the help of your Spirit, how our requests are uttered and answered. You encourage us through the trials we face as we gaze upon the truth of Jesus our Lord, who offers life by his death. According to your truth, we confess the faults of our own hearts, and so according to your word, assure us of your forgiveness and nourish us by your grace. We praise your goodness to us as we reflect upon your perfection, creator and father of all. And we worship you through him who loved us. Establish in us his praise and make us his faithful servants. And so by your forgiveness, free us to live for his sake, who taught us to pray saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> I'm reading to you today from Paul's letter to the Romans, reading from chapter 7, beginning at verse 14. We know that the law is spiritual, but I am mortal, sold as a slave to sin. I do not understand what I do, for I don't do what I would like to do, but instead I do what I hate. Since what I do is what I don't want to do, this shows that I agree that the law is right. So I am not really the one who does this thing. Rather, it is the sin that lives in me. I know that good does not live in me, that is, in my human nature. For even though the desire to do good is in me, I am not able to do it. I don't do the good I want to do. Instead, I do the evil that I do not want to do. If I do what I don't want to do, this means that I am no longer the one who does it. Instead, it is the sin that lives in me. So I find that this law is at work. When I want to do what is good, what is evil is the only choice I have. My inner being delights in the law of God, but I see a different law at work in my body, a law that fights against the law which my mind approves of. It makes me a prisoner to the law of sin, which is at work in my body. What an unhappy man I am. Who will rescue me from this body that is taking me to death? Thanks be to God, who does this through our Lord Jesus Christ. This, then, is my condition. On my own, I can serve God's law only with my mind, while my human nature serves the law of sin. Thanks be to God, may he add his blessing to our understanding of this portion of his holy word. Let us pray. God, be in my words and in our hearts, that we may know your salvation. Amen. Many of you will know that throughout uh, this lockdown period, I have been re reflecting on a, a, a different psalm every day and uh, posting that on Facebook and on YouTube. Well, in my thinking about Psalm 85 on Thursday of this week, I said that I would spend a little more time today thinking about verse 10. Mercy and truth come together. Justice and peace kiss each other. I said on Thursday that the sense is ambiguous, and although always hopeful in relation to God, it may not always be so in human relationships. You see, people meet for many reasons, and it may not always be friendly and pleasing. Kissing is not always according to the same desire or expectation. So mercy may seek to evade truth, Justice may demand revenge or retribution or reconciliation, and not all of these motivations will lead to peace. We all know that the Black Lives Matter movement has been prominent in the news since the death of George Floyd in Minneapolis a couple of weeks ago. And all of these motivations, of course, will be at play. It is inevitable where human beings are concerned. The social and economic legacy handed down to many black people and enjoyed more commonly by white people does still have an impact on lived experience today. And that leaves a mark which is reflected in all our dealings with others. Much of the focus of anger in this country has been upon statues of those who were involved or are accused of being involved in the transatlantic slave trade. The truth is that the slavery of those made in his image has always been an affront to God. 
our own land must own that effrontery. And yet it is not only in our own land, but that's no excuse. Since the dawn of time, the dawn of civilization, slavery has existed. The Hebrew people were themselves slaves in Egypt before being freed by Moses. And they were given laws, commandments to live by, and these included laws about how slaves were to be treated. Now, that's not to give legitimacy to slavery, though. Rather, it is to constrain the worst instincts of fallen humanity in our treatment of others. Just as the law, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, was not to legitimize revenge, but rather to constrain excess, well, so the laws about slavery were meant to give dignity even to the slave in a world where slavery was a basic foundation of the whole economic structure. We like to think that we have moved beyond using others for our own ends. But we must acknowledge that we continue to be assailed by sinful motivations. How often do we really face up to the consequences of our reliance upon sweatshop labour in foreign lands for our own cheap goods. The real truth of slavery is that we all have a capacity to use others for our own benefit. And this has always been the case, from Egypt and Greece and Rome to the Barbary slave trade in North Africa, which involved raids into Europe as far as Britain, Ireland and Iceland. And of course, the transatlantic slave trade in which Britain and its empire, as well as other European nations, were so involved. Coming to terms with this social and economic legacy demands justice, and justice requires truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. But we can still ask, truth for what purpose? For resolution? or to apportion guilt and proclaim judgment. Judgment on its own doesn't bring peace, unless it is tempered with mercy. Truth without mercy leaves us divided and broken and lost. Justice demands truth, but even eye for eye justice will leave us in enmity if the primary demand is retribution. There can be no peace without justice, but truth and justice must meet and hold hands with mercy before there can be peace. To address the legacy of apartheid in South Africa, they established a Truth and Reconciliation Commission. It was painful, but it enabled them to at least begin to deal with the injustices of their own past. And in this way, they sought to forge a new common future. My belief is that we need something like that today. But to be really effective, it would also need to reckon with a fuller understanding of the human condition throughout history. Such a commission would need to acknowledge the brutality and horror of our past and shine truth on the injustice wrought by those who have gone before us, and then perhaps instead of demanding the destruction of statues without democratic consent and antagonizing many who feel their history is being erased, well, perhaps the more forward-looking questions should be asked about what street furniture we should have and why. The truth is there is both good and bad in the history that has shaped us into what we are. And we ought not to forget that, for it reminds us how far we still need to go. There was good and bad. Britain did indeed begin to realise the horror of slavery and its abolishment was hard fought for by people like William Wilberforce. Even for our transatlantic cousins, white Americans and black Americans fought together for the emancipation of slaves against white fellow citizens in the American Civil War. As much as it would be simple to think so, the history of oppression and injustice is not black and white. 
Of course, acknowledgement and understanding is a difficult and complex thing. I acknowledge that I do not have the lived experience of others, but then nor does anyone else. And so we must always be wary if we try to claim insight alone. I saw a, a cartoon on Facebook the other day that resonated. A diverse group of people were sitting around a table and the white man was saying to the black woman, you know, it's funny, I remember it differently. I remember it something as, that fitted my worldview and painted me in a good light. We probably all could say things like that. But whatever we do in our future, we must find a way for mercy and truth and justice and peace to come together. I believe a commission could help us to make sense of our past. And yet more important, even than looking at history, we must be faced with the truth of the human condition that we are all controlled to some degree by our human nature. Paul explicitly says we are slaves to it when he speaks of the conflict within us in today's reading. Those fallen, broken tendencies within us all still resonate throughout the world. And so even today, black slaves are being bought and sold in Libyan markets, and women are trafficked for exploitation in the sex trade, and modern slaves in this country are made to work in nail bars or to wash cars for little more than the rent for the places that they are required to live in. The enslavement of those made in God's image is still an affront to him where it is found. And it is not enough for us simply to come to terms with our past. We must work to overcome human exploitation today. Or we show discussions to be simply lip service. And we must look on ourselves and the captivity by corruption in which we find ourselves today too. But however we think on these things, or however we remember these things, or work to make things better, we need to turn to Scripture for wisdom. And this is where Psalm 85 can be so insightful. The psalm shows that there can be no justice without truth, but truth must be applied with mercy, lest there can be no peace. The demand for justice quite naturally, often leads to anger. But anger wrongly lived can readily lead us to act upon our own worst human motivations. But there is redemption. Who will rescue me from this body that is taking me to death? Paul asks. Thanks be to God, who does this through our Lord Jesus Christ. In Christ Jesus, reconciliation and newness can and does come out of his death on the cross. In the cross of Jesus, we see the world judged, the truth of human hearts is revealed, and Jesus is condemned in our place as a result. He became a curse for our sake. But God's judgment is applied always with mercy. And so reconciliation is offered to us in him. We are forgiven, justified in him, and so we are enabled to find peace. That is, all is made complete with everything as it should be. Can we establish a movement for mercy and truth, justice and peace, truth and reconciliation in our day? Well, I hope that we may be able to demonstrate such qualities in our own living. But it would mean recognizing our own failings and being patient with others in the face of theirs. It would mean seeking to understand each other, our motivations, our stories, our experiences, and our fears, and seeking to forgive when we are let down. It would mean understanding that we are all sin's slaves demanding salvation, even as we are all free people seeking forgiveness. This is what we find in the kingdom established in Jesus. The promise of God arises when we seek him and seek to live those kingdom values together. 
Then will we find righteousness and dwell together in peace. Human loyalty will reach up from the earth and God's righteousness will look down from heaven. For in God, when mercy and truth meet, then truly they join hands. And when justice and peace meet, then truly they kiss. And something beautiful is born. To the glory of God. Amen. Let us pray. God of all redeeming grace, we give you thanks and praise. You care for all your creation and you love each one of us. So we thank you, God of grace. Within your world, we must live and work and love as your people. And yet we find it hard to see your presence with us. For disasters happen, and illness is endured, and oppression continues, and death comes. Creation itself groans until the children of God are revealed. And only you can make sense of our world. But make sense you do. For when we had fallen into sin, you sent your Son to be our Saviour. He lived on earth, full of grace and truth. He fought against evil, and he taught us what is good. In the face of the trials of our living, we know that we are then not alone. Help us to live as Jesus has taught us, with the conviction that nothing can separate us from your love in him. Teach us to spread the hope that comes from his victory over evil. He died on the cross and was raised again, victorious over sin and death. And now you have sent your Spirit to be with the church forever and to help us in our fight against evil. By your Spirit, help us to look outwards to the needs of the world in which we live. And so especially today we think of those who seek to establish justice upon the earth. And we pray for your justice which seeks the truth is exercised with mercy and which ultimately leads to peace. We pray for those who suffer presently with illness or with a traumatic change in life circumstance. We bring our prayers knowing we can trust you, O God of grace. And as we each face the evil that meets us day by day, so may we find peace in our struggling, joy in our fellowship, hope in our perseverance, and loving goodness that never lets us go. In the name of Jesus Christ, who is grace amongst us. Amen. And so we sing together again. Our second hymn is in the old hymn book, number 451, and in the new hymn book, number 497. Almighty Father of all things that be.
The Lord, who is faithful, bless you, strengthen you, protect you from evil, and lead your hearts in the love of God, the endurance of the Spirit, and the life of Christ Jesus our Lord, this day and forever. Amen.